Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are having a great day today. It feels like a long time since I've seen you guys, or well, yeah, you've seen me. <laughs> I can't see you, but anyways, feels like a long time since I've been on here. It's been a week. I hope you all had a great week. I saw Miss Greta read some really awesome books with you guys. Um, I'm actually going to talk to you this morning about a lesson that's called Waste Watchers. Okay, and we're not talking about the waste around your tummy and watching that, though we all should try to do that, I guess. But I'm actually going to talk about waste as in W-A-S-T-E, which is another word for our trash or things that we don't need. Like we've talked about waste before with our bodies, and we've talked about that anything that our body gets rid of. So, sorry about that interruption there. Um, so... We're going to talk about watching the things that we don't need, okay? So, um, let's think about a few things here. When you drive to the store, when you take a shower, when you turn on your air conditioner, um, or you turn on a lamp, what are you using? How do you get those things? Hmm. We are using energy. So, much of the energy that we use comes from burning fossil fuels such as coal and natural gas and oil and gasoline. And when fossil fuels are burned, there are a large amounts of carbon dioxide, and sometimes you might see that in, in your science books and stuff is written as CO2, that's carbon dioxide. There are large amounts of carbon dioxide that are emitted into the atmosphere or they're released into the atmosphere, okay? So carbon dioxide, water vapor, and methane a lot of times are referred to as greenhouse gases, and you may have heard about that before. Um, so they are a natural part of the Earth's atmosphere, Okay, some of that stuff's just naturally occurring. We, I know we hear a lot of bad things, but um, some of that stuff is just naturally occurring in the Earth's atmosphere. So, like the walls of a greenhouse, if you've ever been in a greenhouse, um, people grow their plants in there. And that greenhouse, the windows in it, traps that heat and holds it in there so that those plants or vegetables or flowers or whatever it is, they can start them earlier than if you put them out in the ground because like, you know, this year especially, um, I know for us, we planted a garden and it got cold and nothing came up. Um, and then um, it actually frosted and killed some stuff if we um, hadn't covered it. So when you start your plants and stuff in a greenhouse, that traps in that heat and allows it to be a lot warmer inside that greenhouse than it is outside. Okay, so um, just like that, these greenhouse gases are going to trap the heat that radiates from the earth, okay? So just like you have the walls of this greenhouse, these greenhouse gases are going to trap the heat that is around the earth. So this heat trapping mechanism is called the greenhouse effect. And it is critical to life on Earth. So without it, our planet would be a whole lot colder. And it would be even too cold to support life. It would be like, you know, you, we've, you've learned in school about Saturn and Uranus and Neptune and, and the, um, the dwarf planet Pluto. I forgot what it was called there for a minute. I was wanting to say micro planet. It was a dwarf planet. Um, those are all too cold to support life. Well, without the greenhouse effect, Earth would be too cold to support life. Um, or, or at least support life as we know it. All right, so um, these concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, you know, we need those, but the thing that scientists have found is that those greenhouse gases have been increasing for the past um, well over 100 years or so. And so this increase leads to, um, the scientists think that it leads to changes in the Earth's climate. So when the Industrial Revolution happened, um, we know that in, in your history classes, when you talked about the Industrial Revolution, that is when there were so many factories that were made, people, um, there was all kinds of inventions that were made that made life easier, thus birthed the factory life. Um, and so there was machines that made the things and workers who needed to run the machines. So with all of these inventions, they had to come up with a way to run these machines. And so they used, you know, 
uh, fossil fuels and, and different things to make these machines run. So after the Industrial Revolution, there was this huge jump in the carbon dioxide levels um, in the earth. And it came from the fossil fuels, from um, when automobiles were invented and the more affordable they became for people, the more people who left the horse and buggy and started driving automobiles. Um, and um, the, the plants and the factories and, and all the all the machinery that was invented and stuff was using these fossil fuels. So although most of these fuels are being burned in the more developed countries, the less developed countries um, are also, you know, contributing to the CO2 levels as well because a lot of the lesser developed countries also have automobiles and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not just the more developed countries who are contributing. It's also the lesser developed countries who are contributing to the CO2 level, okay? So, um, you may have heard about CFCs. Um, you might read on the side of um, a bottle and it may say that it does not contain CFCs. Well, CFCs are called chlorofluorocarbons and they're used in air conditioners and solvents and uh, plastic foams and um, all kinds of other products. And then you've got methane um, that comes from rice paddies where they grow rice from landfills. We talked about that in the lesson from uh, animals and termites. Um, there's nitrous oxide from fertilizers and livestock waste and other sources um, that are in the atmosphere. And all of those have increased as well, not just the carbon dioxide levels, but all of these other levels have increased as well because our population has increased over the years. And um, so concentrations of all these gases in the Earth's atmosphere continue to rise. So the United States um, is considered an urban industrial society. And so a lot of our machines run on carbon-based fuel. So each person in the United States is responsible for producing a little over two ton of carbon every year. And most of that comes from our cars. Um, about um, close behind that, um, Canada makes a little under two tons of carbon. Western Europe makes almost a ton of carbon. Japan also makes almost a ton and China makes um, only um, about half a ton. And India makes even less than China. So, um, as our population grows, these levels will continue to double. These, these CO2 levels will continue to double. And we've talked about air pollution. So, this carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere is polluting our air. And so, we talked about how that, that all um, contributes to the greenhouse gases and how that we do need greenhouse gases to keep the earth warm, but we're putting in more of those gases than needs to be there. So um, that's what causes the rise in temperature because we are putting too much greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. Okay, there's too much of it. We need to have some, but we don't need to have too much. So um, there's a lot of scientists that agree that um, it will cause temperatures on earth to rise. Some people say it won't, um, you know, we hear different things, but anyways, we know that carbon dioxide, too much carbon dioxide in the air is not good. Um, it's not good for you to breathe carbon dioxide. When you hold your breath, you're not dying from a lack of oxygen if you hold your breath, um, until you were to, you know, people who can't get air, it's not because of the lack of oxygen. It's because carbon dioxide is building up in their body and carbon dioxide is poisonous to us, okay? So we don't need to have too much carbon dioxide in um, our air that we breathe. So um, a lot of scientists are uncertain about, you know, these increased levels of carbon dioxide. What's that, what is that going to do to the effects of our planet? But they all agree that um, it's not healthy for us to breathe. It's not healthy for the animals to breathe. And if we're cutting down trees, um, even though sometimes it is a good thing to cut down trees, um, we need to have trees to, to clean and filter out the air for us, okay? So uh, many countries and organizations and individuals are really concerned about this rise in carbon dioxide and thinking about ways to reduce that amount. So there's some things that you can do at home and we're gonna talk about that, okay? So um, your electricity comes from Newport Utilities Board, right? Okay, so that's um, from what I understand stuff, I think it's all part of TVA. Um, so you have a meter outside your house 
that tells how much electricity you are using. Now, um, I think everybody's meters are probably digital now, dig digitized. Um, back a long time ago, it was a bunch of little faces with, um, like little clock faces with arrows and all that stuff. But now it's a digital reader and you can read how much um, you're using right now and you can read how much you've used for the whole year. Um, there also is an app called uh, Smart Hub that you can go in and see how much electricity you're using every day at your house. And you can determine, you know, what your light bill is going to be for the next month. And you can look and see, you know, on this day, you used a lot of electricity. Go back and think about, hey, what did I do that day? And how can I make, um, how can I keep under that number, okay? You can even calculate and figure out how much it is per, how much money it is per kilowatt hour and figure out how to reduce it and only use a certain amount of kilowatt hours a day. It's really cool. So if your parents don't have that app, you need to get that app because we use ours all the time now that we found out about it. But doing those things will help us keep that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and it's you know there's a lot of things that we can do in our home that will help the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere so i know a lot of people now use the um the little swirly light bulbs the they're more energy efficient so um if you're i can't think of the name of those right now that's oh that's horrible anyways they're little swirly ones but anyways when you replace your light bulbs with those that saves um, carbon dioxide from going into the atmosphere versus the, the regular kind of uh, light bulbs. When you turn out the lights, when you leave a room and you're not using the electricity in that room, that saves carbon dioxide. When you turn off the TV when you're not work watching it, that saves carbon dioxide. When you turn off your computer or your tablet or whatever it is that you've been using, you know, that day, that saves carbon dioxide. All of those little things, even though you think it's not really a whole lot, it does because all of those things use energy and electricity and in the production of electricity, it makes carbon dioxide. So all of those things will help with the carbon dioxide emissions, okay? So then there's also other things that you can do too, um, like your hot water heater. Okay, we all have a hot water heater in our house because we, we need to have hot water so that we can take baths and so we can wash our clothes and we can do the dishes and and um, just different things. But there's some things that you can do. You can put a, um, a jacket of insulation around your hot water heater to make it more efficient. And when you do that, you save like 600 pounds of carbon dioxide from going into the atmosphere just by putting an insulated jacket around your hot water heater because it keeps the water hotter longer without using as much electricity. It's just like you putting on a jacket in the winter and it keeps you warm. Um, you can turn down your hot water heater temperature by 10 degrees. And if you um, heat your water through electricity, that saves 660 pounds of carbon dioxide in a year. Um, of course, it's different if you use oil to heat it or gas to heat it, but still it saves a significant amount. Um, if you have low flow shower heads, that also saves in carbon dioxide. If you choose to wash your clothes, like if you do five loads a week and you do four of the five of those loads in cold water, that saves carbon dioxide. I know that sounds really crazy, but because you're not using heat to warm up that water, you're saving carbon dioxide. So when you decide to do your laundry in cold water, you're going to save like 460 pounds of carbon dioxide from going into the atmosphere. It's pretty neat, isn't it? And I know there's sometimes we need to use hot water when we wash our clothes, but sometimes we don't. They've got all kinds of um, high efficiency detergents and stuff now that you can use in cold water and it gets your clothes clean. So, you know, there's just little things like that. Um, if you plant a tree on the south side or the west side of your house, it will We've talked about the benefits of trees. When you plant trees around your house, it's going to keep your house cooler in the summer and you won't have to use as much um, air conditioning to cool down your house. That's going to save 150 pounds of carbon dioxide from going into the air. When you turn your thermostat down, like if you have your thermostat in your house set at 72, if you just bump it down one more degree to 71, that would save you 410 pounds of carbon dioxide from going into the air. That's a lot just for one degree, and one degree doesn't usually make a whole lot of difference. 
um, if you turn it down by 10 degrees at night because you're in bed and you're covered up and, you know, you've got your own body heat and, and you can put an extra quilt on the bed or whatever, you would save 2,070 pounds of carbon dioxide just from bumping it down at night and then putting it back up in the morning when you get up. Um, if you turn your air conditioner up one degree, if you have it set at 72 and you turn it up to 73, you're going to save 220 pounds of carbon dioxide. If you make sure that your air conditioner and your furnace and your HVAC and all that stuff has annual tune-ups and services and all that stuff, you could save anywhere from 220 pounds to 1,030 pounds of carbon dioxide just from making sure that everything's working smoothly and like it needs to be. When you make sure that your windows do not leak air in or out and you make sure that your doors don't have any drafts or anything like that and you put weather stripping around it and everything, you can save anywhere from 700 to 1,600 pounds of carbon dioxide from being released into the atmosphere. So if you were to do any of these things, you could add it up and you could save, you know, well over 10,000 pounds of carbon dioxide that could, you know, be leaked into the atmosphere. And we've talked before about, like, when you go to town, reducing the amount of trips that you make, like, trying to get all of your, um, all of your, all of your errands done in, in one day versus going to town four or five times a day. Of course, that's going to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide. If you know somebody in your family is going to town too, catch a ride with them. We know things like that are going to reduce carbon dioxide, but even these things that you do inside your home, is going to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that's emitted into the atmosphere. And that's that's huge. So, it's a good thing. So, I hope you guys can try to, you know, maybe do one of these things. And, and you can, you know, if you download that Smart Hub app, you can look and see how much you've used and kind of take a, um, kind of write down and keep a journal of what you've done that day. Um, and then see when you cut something out that you don't necessarily need, how much less kilowatt per hour in electricity that you're using. Um, I did that with um, drying clothes. Um, sometimes, you know, necessity, I have to throw my clothes in the dryer because sometimes I'm super busy with work and family and, and different things. But when I have time to hang my clothes out to dry, it saves a lot of electricity. And that makes your light bill cheaper. And then everybody's happy, right? It's just finding the time to do some of these things. Some of these things are kind of hard to do when you don't have time. But when you do have time, you know, hang your clothes out instead of using a dryer. That saves in, in electricity. And so when you save electricity, you're saving carbon dioxide from going into the air, the atmosphere, definitely. Okay. All right. So I have a cute little craft to show you guys today. I made a bunny crayon holder. So I took a toilet paper roll and I cut it in half. I drew my little bunny face on it. I put a bottom on it, glued it on, glued its little feet, put a little cotton tail on the back, put some little ears on there, and I have made a little crayon holder to hold our crayons. Is that not cute? So instead of throwing this guy away, now we've got a place to put our crayons and we have them all together and it's super duper cute, isn't it? All right, so we'd love to see your little bunny crayon holders and maybe you'd want to, maybe you don't want to do a bunny. Maybe you want to make a, a dinosaur crayon holder or a, um, a puppy dog crayon holder. So if you make some other kind of animal, we'd love to see it. So you could put it, you could post it at the bottom of this video in the comment section. Um, you could send it to us on Facebook um, at Keep Clark County Beautiful, or you can email us at kccbdirector at gmail.com. We'd love to share your crafts. We've not gotten a whole lot of pictures. We would love to share them if you guys do. Um, these are awesome, cute little things, you know, great to do on rainy days. Um, and Or if the kids are saying they're bored, <laughs> you know, these are great little things to do. They're super easy, and they're useful. It's not just something that's going to lay around and not get any use. All right, so I will see you guys tomorrow. I hope you have a beautiful day. It's supposed to be nice and warm. I hope you get outside and enjoy some sunshine, get some vitamin D, and just have a great day today, okay? And I will see you tomorrow. I hope you have a good day. Bye.